Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm in New River Gorge National Park. Tucked away in the heart of the mountains of West Virginia, this park is home to whitewater rafting, rock climbing, and one of the most biodiverse forests in all of Appalachia. But the gorge wasn't always a park. From the 1890s to the 1950s, over 60 mines operated on just a 14 mile stretch of the New River. Here, miners extracted the coal that fueled America's rise through the Industrial Revolution. And a lot of those coal mines are preserved here in New River Gorge National Park. But why is there so much coal here? What was it used for? And what was life like for the miners who mined it? Let's find out today on Outsider Class. <laughs> Humans have been using rocks to improve our lives for, well, basically the entire existence of our species. Flint was used to make simple tools, uh, mudstone has been used to make ceramics for millennia, and sandstone has been used to make anything from microchips to TV screens, glass, heck, even buildings. And then there's coal, which was used as fuel to power anything from steam engines to power plants. But what the heck is it? To answer that question and more is geologist Maya Bradford. Hi. Maya, thanks so much for joining me on a very wet outsider classroom. Well, day. I love this weather, so yeah. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, yeah, it's awful beautiful, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. So what are we looking at here? This is a seam of coal, and coal is a type of sedimentary rock that's formed of almost pure carbon, and that carbon comes from plants. So this is, this is almost all carbon? Well, this is a type of bituminous coal, which is about 80% carbon, but 80 there can be carbon more pure coal like anthracite, which is pure carbon, and then less pure coal like lignite, which is maybe 60% carbon. So how did this coal form? Well, first the carbon's taken up by plants during photosynthesis. Then those plants um, die in their depositional environment and are buried deep within the earth. That heat and pressure from the earth squeezes out all the methane, oxygen, and water, leaving only the carbon behind. So this, these used to be plants? Yes, they used to be plants and swamps. Wow. Yeah. So, so when, did the, when did these plants and swamps live? Well, these particular swamp deposits lived in about 330 million years ago during what's called the Carboniferous period. Okay. Yeah, so the world was a little bit warmer than it is today and probably wetter than the general climate of today. That may be around as wet <laughs> Maybe it is around today. as wet it is right now, exactly. So plants were extra productive. The continents were characterized by abundant swamps, which just sucked up all the carbon from the atmosphere and buried them in their deposits. So after time, that heat and pressure from the earth during burial converted those deposits to coal. Well, why are these coal seams so accessible here in West Virginia? Well, it's all really because of plate tectonics. After these deposits were formed and buried, um, the Appalachian Mountains were exhumed through several plate tectonic events and that folded the coal seams and then exhumed them up to the surface where we can see them today. So the, the continents smashed together to meet the Appalachian Mountains and they kind of put them up, lifted them up? Through several events, yes. Wow, I mean, this, that's crazy to think that these used to be swamp trees. Yes. Man, that's amazing. Well, Maya, thank you so much. I learned so much about coal today. Well, sedimentary rocks can teach us a lot. Yeah, they sure can. As Maya explained, coal is mostly elemental carbon. When carbon comes into contact with oxygen and is provided a little bit of activation energy, it reacts, producing carbon dioxide and a lot of heat energy. It's called a combustion reaction, and it's how we've been able to harvest energy from fossil fuels. Coal, uh, methane or natural gas, gasoline, are all hydrocarbons or carbon-based molecules that go through a combustion reaction, which allow us to create energy. And when James Watt learned how to harness that heat energy to turn water into steam in his OG steam engine, coal was put to all sorts of uses throughout the Industrial Revolution. Locomotives, water pumps, big old ships like the Titanic were all powered using coal-fired steam engines. But by far the most important and impactful use for coal was electricity. 
By the end of the 19th century, steam turbines had been put to use powering electric generators. This did more than let us watch baseball games at night. Electricity provided factories the power to manufacture goods faster, cheaper, and in quantities that were previously unthinkable. And for most of the industrial era, that electricity was provided by coal. But that's just part of the story. Who mined the coal had a big impact on our lives, almost as much as what coal helped produce. And to teach me more about that is Lloyd Tomlinson. He's the education director at the West Virginia Mine Wars Museum, which preserves and shares stories about coal miners. So Lloyd, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So let's start with who were the folks who even worked in the mines? Well, you have a really diverse group working in the coal mines in West Virginia. You have a lot of people who were American-born whites. You've also got a large population of immigrant labor who comes over mainly from Southern and Eastern Europe, particularly Italy, but also Poland, Russia, um, some of the Slavic countries that were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And you've got a lot of um, African-American workers coming up from the deep south, but you had a pretty decent sized population of African-Americans who were also born in West Virginia as well. So this is a pretty diverse uh, group of folks living and working in these yeah. mines. So what was life like for a turn of the century coal miner? The working conditions they had to work in were nothing short of brutal. Um, it was very dark, damp, dusty, and they were constantly on guard for roof falls. Um, these petrified tree trunks, which the miners called kettle bottoms, would fall out of the roof and they could kill a man just like that. That's terrifying. Yeah, and they fell without warning too. Um, every once in a while though, you'd ha end up with more severe like mine explosions. Um, there's a lot of gases that um, accumulate in coal mines, including methane. The slightest spark, which could come from something as simple as a coal miner's headlamp, it could ignite that mixture and those blasts would kill dozens or even hundreds of miners at one time. What did the miners do to try to make their working conditions, well, not just better, but safer? When I say it's a fight for the union, a lot of times I mean it is literally a fight for the union. There would be shootouts between miners and these mine guards who the companies hired to keep the union out. Um, and these mine guards would beat miners, sometimes even kill them. Cow. And if you were caught trying to organize a union, you would be evicted from your house if, after you were immediately fired. Um, all of your stuff would be thrown out on the street, your family would be thrown out, and you would probably be put on a blacklist, which would ensure that you'd never work in another West Virginia coal mine again. Pay was the biggest expense if you're a coal operator, like the biggest single expense was payroll. A lot of the operators in southern West Virginia, they were trying to compete with mines that had already been unionized in the Midwest and um, up in Pennsylvania. So if they could keep pay low, they could undercut those other um, companies and be more competitive on the market. In the long run though, the miners did end up winning their demands through um, the New Deal, setting like a minimum wage, um, creating a 40 hour work week, um, a five day work week. So you have the weekend that um, becomes law. Few people realize that people died for things like the weekend and a maximum work week and um, fair pay. Well, Lloyd, thank you so much for teaching me about this incredible history. Uh, it's amazing to think that the, the victories of these coal miners, is, like I said, it impacts everyday working people even now today. <laughs>often think of sedimentary rocks as having an outsized impact on history. If it was for giant swamps 300 million years ago being preserved as coal, America may have had a much different story. Those rocks powered our industrial revolution and allowed us to build bridges made of steel instead of wood, move things around by train instead of horse, and stay up way too late watching TV instead of going to bed at a decent hour. A lot of the infrastructure we still use today was built at a time when coal powered everything. 
And then there's the story of the men and women who worked to get the coal out of the ground to make that modern lifestyle possible. The job was dangerous and difficult, and they had to band together, otherwise they would have been continuously exploited by the mine operators. In the face of incredibly brutal crackdown, they organized and unionized, getting better working conditions not just for them, but for everybody. But coal hasn't come without its cost. The industry has taken a massive toll on the environment. It's caused deforestation, soil erosion, lower water quality. That's not good for anybody. And of course, burning all that coal has released a lot of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere as the product of a combustion reaction. All that extra CO2 has trapped the sun's heat energy and has led to a warming planet. Coal powered the 20th century, but it'll be us here in the 21st century who will be dealing with its consequences. Pretty amazing to think how a rock can change the course of history. Makes you want to learn more about geology and history. Yeah, doesn't it? Nah, that's okay. I won't make you sad. You know right here. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.